Hello everyone! I have a little surprise today for my fellow Jane Eyre fans, something I never thought I would get to do. Several years ago, and some of you might know this, I reviewed the original Broadway cast recording of the Jane Eyre musical. I knew that this other, older version of it existed, the 1996 Toronto cast recording, but it's pretty rare. You can find copies of it, but they tend to be expensive. So I've always wanted to hear this Toronto recording, but was resigned to the fact that I'd probably never hear more than a couple clips. And then, a couple weeks ago, someone left a comment on my review of the original Broadway cast recording and asked if I'd ever gotten to hear the Toronto version, and when I said no, he provided a link to a website that had all of the audio from that CD. <laughs> I am very grateful to this individual for providing the link so that I can finally hear this version of the musical. And of course, now I'm going to share my thoughts on it with all of you. But first, for any of you who aren't in the know, yes, there is a Jane Eyre musical, and it made it to Broadway in 2000. It had music and lyrics by Paul Gordon, and book and additional lyrics by John Caird. It starred Marla Schaffel as Jane and James Barber as Rochester, and it had a fair number of very devoted fans, but unfortunately, it did not have a very long run. Before it made it to Broadway, though, it went through a couple revolutions, as is the case with most shows. This 1996 Toronto production also starred Marla Schaffel, who seems to have been with the show from beginning to end, opposite Anthony Crivello as Rochester. And a number of other performers can be heard on this recording in the same role they would play on Broadway. It's interesting to hear an earlier production when you're familiar with the final version, although actually the original Broadway cast recording, which from here on out I'll just refer to as the OBC, um, is not the final version. They continued to make revisions and cut songs and change lyrics, and perhaps that's a reason why the show didn't last long on Broadway. But anyway, this is like reading a rough draft of one of your favorite novels. A lot of things are the same, some things are totally different, and some things it's like, well, I see where this germinated. I'm gonna go through the recording now and offer a few comments on each track, starting with track number one, Opening. The opening tune is familiar to anyone who knows the Jane Eyre musical, it's the Secrets of the House melody, but the lyrics are different. It goes back to describe Jane's babyhood and what happened to her parents, and ends with a pretty emotional duet as her parents fear for their baby's future and promise to watch her from heaven. It is perhaps a little wordy, something that I suppose you could say about the musical overall, but there's so much ground they try to cover while staying true to Bronte's original language. Fortunately, the lyrics are clear and the narrative is pretty easy to follow, so if it seems strange to you at first, I believe that you can get used to it, and some of the music is gorgeous. By the way, it's a very small cast, and many, if not all, of the actors in the ensemble play dual roles. Interestingly, uh, Jane's father is voiced by Anthony Crivello, who also plays Rochester. Don't read into that. Track number two is called Let Me Be Brave, and since the first line is I'm locked inside this haunted room, that leads me to assume that it is the Red Room scene. Surprisingly, it's sung by adult Jane, not young Jane. I do notice that young Jane doesn't actually sing very much on this recording. The melody is compelling, coupled with moving lyrics as Jane makes an unhappy plea. Um, the show's off to a sad start, but it's Jane Eyre, so... So far, this is all pretty new to me, as this isn't the way the OBC starts. I think the OBC condenses Jane's background more. Track number three is Naughty Girl. This is Brocklehurst's interview, and the opening lines here are included at the end of The Orphan, the first track on the OBC but on the Toronto recording, we get much more of this scene. I was surprised to find out that the same actor is playing Brocklehurst here as played him on the OBC, uh, just because he sounds so different. When I listened more closely, then I realized, oh yeah, it's the same guy. There's no sight so sad, no stench so bad, as that of a naughty girl. 
<laughs> Track four is Children of God. This is the Welcome to Lowood song. The first few lines are the same as on the OBC, but then it splits off. Jane is introduced to the students by Miss Temple, not by Brocklehurst. So it was Miss Temple originally in it, but got cut for the OBC because she's not on the OBC at all. Adult Jane then introduces us to Helen just before the drama of Helen's punishment unfolds. And that part is pretty upsetting just to listen to. Track 5 is Forgiveness. This version of Helen's song features different lyrics and plays out like a conversation rather than a solo, with Helen singing a gentle rebuke or refutation in response to what young Jane says. Adult Jane joins her younger self for a couple lines here, which is interesting but a little confusing as I'm not sure if she's supposed to be narrating the scene or participating in it. That would be clearer, of course, if I were watching the scene. I like this Helen. She doesn't have an astounding voice, but I find her vocals a little more throaty and colorful than the original Broadway cast Helen, which makes the song more interesting. Track 6 is called My Maker, and Helen sings it on her deathbed. You can hear a similar song on the original Broadway cast, but sung much later in the show by Jane, and I think it eventually ended up getting cut. There's something a little gospel-y about Helen's singing here, and the track ends with really pretty choral harmonies from the female ensemble. It's very churchy, for lack of a better word, and it fits Helen very well. My only criticism is that Helen's voice sounds awfully strong and lusty for someone who's been coughing and is about to die, but it's musical theater. People are always able to sing just before they die. Track number seven is Perfectly Nice. This one's very familiar, and unquestionably it's the same actress playing Mrs. Fairfax here as on the OBC. This is one of the few comedic numbers. It's not really a song I love, um, and I've never been crazy about the musical's characterization of Mrs. Fairfax as a bustling, scatterbrained, rambling woman. That's just not how I pictured her in the book. I do think I like this version better than the one on the OBC, where Mrs. Fairfax comes across as kind of rude. Track number eight is As Good As You, which is Rochester's introductory number, at least on these two recordings, and the two versions are virtually the same, except for the singing. I expect there might be a little Team Crivello versus Team Barber competition among the diehard fans of this musical. As far as I'm concerned about James Barber, his questionable personal history aside, um, I've liked him in various musicals, and I like his performance as Rochester. But I'm not attached to it. You know how sometimes you glom onto a musical and you're like, I love this person in this role and I can't imagine anybody else, and then you hear some other people doing it and it's just not the same, it doesn't work for you, and it's like, this person or nothing. That's not really how I feel about James Barber's Rochester. I like him in the role, I'm used to him on the recording, but I'm perfectly willing to hear somebody else give it a try. And I spent... I don't know, 13 years wanting to hear Anthony Crivello's Rochester? Thank goodness he makes an overall favorable first impression. It takes some adjusting, I have to get used to his interpretation and differences in the music and differences in lyrics, but his Rochester has an appealing voice. He sounds slightly older and rougher than Barber does. Sometimes Barber's voice is just a little too nice, you know what I'm saying? Um, and this Rochester has a little more weariness, and I like that. For anyone who's curious, I did look it up. In 1996, when this was recorded, Anthony Crivella was 41. In 2000, when the OBC was recorded, James Barber was 34. And having listened to the whole recording multiple times now, I'm impressed by how different Crivello sounds here in this track as opposed to later on in the show. Here he's much softer and subtler. This number is conversational and a little bit confessional. His voice doesn't yet convey the anguish that you'll hear later when Crivello really opens up. Track number nine is called Perfect Match, and I was a little confused by this one until I realized that the guests had arrived already and this was them singing about Rochester and Blanche Ingram. The men are singing about marriage being glorious, and the women are singing about I don't know what because I can't really understand what they're saying. It's kind of a bombastic, operatic ensemble number, and I don't mind that they cut it. 
Elizabeth DeGracia plays Blanche here as she did on the OBC, and I'm disappointed that, at least on this recording, there's no solo for her. The Finer Things, her solo on the OBC, is such a great showcase for her voice, and such a fun, tongue-in-cheek diva song to sing along with, or I should say, to try to sing along with, and I miss it here. Track 10 is Painting Her Portrait. This is Jane's solo in which she pragmatically and ruthlessly compares herself to Blanche. It's another song that's similar to its Broadway counterpart, and that makes me happy because I really like this number. It's interesting to pick up on the subtle differences with Schaffel's vocals between the two versions. I'd say her voice is a little softer on the Toronto recording, while on the OBC, she's just got a smidgen more intensity and theatricality. Like, Broadway Jane is a little bit closer to the edge of despair. But both renditions are great. Track 11 is Secret Soul. I've never seen the show live, only a rough bootleg, but I've always believed that Secret Soul took place after Jane rescued Rochester from the fire, so I'm not sure about its placement here. I love Schaffel's low notes. She has such a great lower register, and I wish I could hit those notes as clearly as she does. Where this one surprised me when I first listened to it was Rochester's entrance, which was totally different from what I expected. I'm going along, and the song is relatively similar similar to the way it is on Broadway cast, and then, what? <laughs> What's going on? The Broadway version is like, deep in my secret soul, her spring of life draws me near, her gentle voice I hold dear, her life has infected every wound and every pore. I feel this mystery possess me, and I pray that mercy's hand will bless me. On the Toronto version, it's like, deep in my secret soul, my secret soul cries out loud. I can't remember, cries out. Life has infected every wound and every pore. I feel this mystery possess me, and I pray that mercy's hand will bless me. It totally threw me off at first. However, from the line, I feel this mystery possess me, onto the end, it grabs me. So on the one hand, I'm thinking I prefer the OBC version, where Rochester is in the lower register where I expect him, I think it sounds good, it's what I'm used to. But on the other hand, the more I listen to this, the more I'm like, ugh, that sounds really powerful, and I'm loving the way Crivello sings deep in my secret soul, my heart is cursed, ugh. So, it's a draw. Which is not a bad thing. And now I'm all red from singing, so I'm gonna take a break from filming for a bit and let my face return to a normal color. Track 12 is Dream of a Child, and since it sounds similar musically to the first track opening, I'm guessing it's the first song after intermission. After the ensemble sings about things beyond this earth, but in a different way than they do on the OBC, Jane describes a disturbing dream she had, so I guess this must be the precursor to the Mason incident. Um, I find this one a little forgettable and obscure, so I can understand why it didn't make it further. Track 13 is The Gypsy. Yes, the musical has a gypsy scene and I love it. This one's fun. Crivello's Gypsy is different from Barber's Gypsy. A little less falsetto, a little more kind of Italian. It's mostly the same, except the verse sung to Jane has different lyrics. And then Crivello makes a very smooth transition back to Rochester's voice. Track 14 is titled Second Self, and it is the proposal scene. But before you get there, there's a section that starts out with the melody of In the Light of the Virgin Morning, even though that song does not appear on this recording. And this is Jane's inner thoughts being voiced by various members of the ensemble. Which is interesting, a little strange, it's a little strange to hear Jane's thoughts being spoken by the same people who voiced Blanche and Brocklehurst and so on. It's mentioned she's been away for a month, so I guess she did go see her aunt. I wish there was a full cast recording of this show, I feel like there is so much that I'm missing. There are quite a few additional new-to-me lyrics, and uh, some of them are a bit of a stretch. There are quite a few nature analogies and um, things that just 
don't blend together quite so well, I guess. There's also some unusual percussion in the My Hope of Heaven Lies section, which made it sound more like music from a western, so I'm glad they changed that. I think that they made some smart choices. I've listened to the corresponding track on the OBC a lot, and so I admit that this was hard to get used to. I was especially iffy about Crivello's performance in certain sections. But I really like his version of the Will I Not Guard and Cherish You verse, which happens to be my favorite part of the entire sequence. I especially like his defy them all. His passion is just, ugh, there. At the very end of the track, the ensemble comes back in to describe the storm and the split chestnut tree, and then Jane and Rochester sing the Brave Enough for Love chorus, which was unexpected. Track 15 is Slip of a Girl, Mrs. Fairfax's other song where she expresses shock and dismay at Jane's engagement. The Toronto and Broadway versions are very similar. I admit this is not a song I usually go to, but it has its good points. There are some clever lyrics, and Jane's verse is so pretty. I think I might like this version better than the Broadway version, so for Mrs. Fairfax's solos, it's two for two, Toronto over Broadway. Track 16 is Farewell, Good Angel, and oh boy, if there is a song on this Toronto cast recording that I have gotten a little obsessed with since I first listened to it a couple weeks ago, it is this quick two-minute solo following Jane's departure. Um, I really like Crivello's performance here. I really like it. I like Barbara's version too. I think this is a gripping moment in the show. But there's a ragged raspiness or hoarseness here that's like, oh yeah, this is clearly a desperate, broken man in emotional anguish. And the orchestrations are so intense and I just can't get enough of this one. Track 17 is titled Morton slash A Silence I Hear, and it's Sinjin's proposal. We've jumped ahead quite a bit. I didn't like Sinjin's voice that much, which is appropriate, I guess, possibly even intentional, as you do hear him sing in the ensemble, and while well, I don't have an aversion to it the way I do when he starts singing here, everything about this track is a little different than on the OBC. Uh, the Toronto recording on the whole includes quite a lot of sung and spoken dialogue, like Jane and Sinjin's argument here, and I appreciate that. It helps fill in a lot of gaps. They start to pray to the tune of Secret Soul, and that's when Rochester's disembodied voice comes in. Then there's a pause, which is followed by a silence I hear, which is a pretty song, but I'm not sure what it's in reference to, unless it's the sense of peace Jane has after making her decision. And number 18 is Brave Enough for Love, the reunion scene, and finale. I have to smile every time I listen to it at how delighted and amazed Rochester is at the sound of her voice. He's like a man completely rejuvenated. This last number is pretty much the same as it is on the OBC, so they were confident about how they wanted the musical to end. There are just a couple minor differences, like a heavy drum beat during the last verse, which doesn't really fit, so I'm glad they toned it down. And the OBC added a final repetition of the last line. So I really like this Toronto recording. It sounds great, the music is beautiful, and so sadly underappreciated. Marla Schaffel is as good, if not even better, than she was on the Broadway recording, and Anthony Crivello absolutely kills it in some sections. As someone who already had a soft spot for this musical, it was exciting to hear an earlier form of it. I wasn't expecting it to supplant my affection for the original Broadway cast recording, but I don't know. Um, I don't think I like one over the other at this point. They're both kind of neck and neck. There are parts where I feel like, mm, yes, it was smart that they ended up changing that, but there's nothing horrendous. Being so familiar with the original Broadway cast recording, of course there are things that I miss. There's no finer things, there's no In the Light of the Virgin Morning, there's no Sirens or Sirens Reprise, there's also nothing from Bertha or Richard Mason. But if I want to hear those songs, I haven't lost them, I can listen to them on the OBC. And with the Toronto recording, it's fun to compare what is similar, and there's plenty of exciting new stuff to discover. So I think the Toronto cast recording is definitely worth checking out. It's still the Jane Eyre musical, it's just a little bit different than what you might be more familiar with. So if you like the musical, I think it's safe to say you'll like this, and you might even find some new favorite versions of the songs. 
I hope you all enjoyed this musical review. If you happen to have listened to this recording already, or if you go and listen to it now after watching this video, feel free to share your own thoughts on it in the comments below, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching!